After an accident, minutes matter. Your words and actions matter even more. You need help, and you need it now. This is David vs. Goliath, brought to you by Dolman Law Group Accident Injury Lawyers, a boutique firm with a reputation for going head-to-head -head with the insurance company giants and putting people over profits. Hey, my name's Stan Geip, and we're here with another episode of the David vs. Goliath podcast. We're fortunate today to have a special guest on the program, Ed Siramboli, who is an attorney now that specializes in products liability cases as they relate to children's products. And with Christmas rolling up, people buying presents and stuff like that, it's a very timely topic to discuss. So, Ed, thanks for coming on. Oh, no problem. No problem at all. Yeah, it's uh, uh, handling cases involving... Um, you know, products that have injured kids are, are one aspect of, uh, you know, our practice and, and something that, uh, you know, we, we um, uh, take very seriously uh, because obviously I have kids and, and now I actually am a proud grandparent, believe it or not. I have two grandchildren, small grandchildren. So it's definitely something that, you know, has developed into a bit of a niche for us over the past couple of years. And, and, and we certainly, uh, uh, you know, take it very seriously, helping those families where children have been hurt. Well, you know, as a practicing attorney and someone who, who interviews a lot of attorneys on podcasts, I notice when we talk about practice areas, they generally happen one of two ways. Okay, people either say, you know, I really want to get into this, and they begin learning it and pursuing those cases, or they're already in practice doing something else, and a really good case that looks yeah. like it involves this area of law approaches them, and they go, you know what? I need to learn how to do this and become an expert so I can handle this case. Did, did, did you get involved in one of those two ways? Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. You know, I had done a, a number of products cases over the years. I, I, I do a lot of trucking work. And, and so as a part of that, we would have a tire case that might be a product case or an engine case or something along those lines. And then I handled some you know other products cases over the years. And then one day... I was actually meeting with a family, believe it or not, on a um, very catastrophic tractor trailer case. And we're talking and they're like, you know, we've just had so much tragedy in our in our family over the last year, year and a half. And I said, oh, my gosh, well, you know, what has happened? So they started telling me this story about um, their son and daughter, whose two year old had died in a playpen. And I was like, you know, obviously, uh, I was just taken back and, and I said, well, you know, tell me, tell me a little bit more about, you know, what happened. So they started telling me more about it. I mean, it was just absolutely, you know, absolutely devastating uh, what happened to this little, you know, this little baby. Its windpipe had been crushed on, on the top of a playpen. And then to add insult, you know, to, you know, to, to this catastrophe, because it was such a weird set of facts uh, the state police had actually investigated the mom and dad for, you know, uh, abuse and had, you know, then had to clear them. So it was really just this, the poor family had just really gone through a horrible, horrible circumstance. So once I heard the story, I then said, and, and I didn't expect that the, the answer would be yes. I said, oh my gosh, do you still have the playpen? They're like, yeah, we still have it. So that kind of started us down the road of, of you know, this this journey into you know cases involving products that have you know hurt kids and and that case really was the catalyst because we kind of got to see how products especially children's products all the testing that's supposed to go into them to make them safe and then the exact opposite in this particular case how there wasn't any testing how it was sold from a you know chinese manufacturer through amazon and then ultimately made its way to you know to to these parents and who are, you know, still to this day, obviously, just devastated by, you know, by what happened. Uh, so that's how we kind of fell into this, you know, little niche area, um, which was, um, again, unintended for sure. But I'm, I'm happy that it's, you know, that it's happened that way, because uh, it's been very rewarding helping these parents achieve some closure and then also, you know, these parents really, parents that have had children that have been hurt, I would say overwhelmingly in, in, in you know, our experience, 
uh, not only do they want to see justice for themselves and their family, but they they start to really act as advocates for other families as well. And, and we've seen that in this, you know, this, you know, through working in these, this area and working in these cases, these parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, I mean, they truly become, you know, voices for everybody that has been, you know, kids that have been hurt, families that have been hurt by, you know, defective products for, you know, for, uh, for kids. And I, I'm going to ask kind of what may seem like a simple question to people, you know, working in this field, but may not be to people listening to the podcast. Okay. Kids are kids. Okay. They're going to yeah. get hurt on products, whether they're defective or not. All right, they just sometimes kids do dumb things with products. Sometimes, no matter how careful you are, you're going to get hurt. You're going to trip. You're going to fall off of things. What is it that causes or gives rise to a product's liability case? What is it children's yeah. parents should be looking for when they see those injuries? Sure. So, so that's a really you know, Stan, it's a really good point. And and what I will tell you, what I've learned in in starting to do this work is the products are designed with that idea in mind they're like look we're we're gonna we know kids are gonna jump and 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 fall and and you know they're not as coordinated as an adult so the the research and design takes those things into consideration and so one of the things that you know parents should really look for whenever they're buying a playpen or or a crib or you know any type of toy look for the safety certifications and and look for that these products have gone through very rigorous testing you know by a number of there's a whole slew of agencies out there that does it but look for those and make sure that those certifications are actually real certifications you can look them up online through these various agencies and they'll tell you exactly what products have gone through what testing and that they've certified and because in this particular playpen case, there was a it was a fraudulent safety certification that was on the Amazon website. So these parents felt comfortable uh, purchasing this product, even though they didn't know where it was coming from, and because of this safety certification, which ended up not being accurate or truthful. And so, you know, once they got it, it had but just been designed completely, you know, defective. But couple of things that you know parents always should make sure that a product doesn't have hard edges you know when you have hard edges those kids you know if a, if a child falls into a hard edge it's certainly going to do a lot more damage than an edge that is padded well if if you have bars and they're steel or aluminum bars make sure that those are are padded as well Make sure any of the, you know, the the rivets or the screws are covered over because these are all things that can, even if the kids are doing everything they're supposed to be doing and they happen to fall or, or, or slip, these are all the aspects of, of various children's toys uh, that can really, really, really hurt kids if they're not designed properly. So along those lines, one thing I'd like people, if they don't, if nothing else, take from this, you know, podcast if your kid's been injured with some kind of product i don't care what kind of product it is if he's got a serious injury or result with an encounter with the product hang on to it okay oh, don't get mad at it yeah. don't smash it don't throw it away don't say he's never going to use this damn thing again and throw it down the road because it's dangerous hang on to it even if yeah. you don't understand what may be wrong with the product at this point because look if your kid's bleeding out the last thing you're worried about is how it happened what's wrong with the product you know you're so concerned about the safety and the health of your child everything else goes out the window and yeah. it's going to be a few days before your thoughts calm down depending on how serious that injury is and you don't want to be in a situation where you go you know what did, was something wrong with that product? Did, did, was there something yeah. wrong with that that caused it? And now it's gone. The garbage man has come. It's gone to the dump. We know it was a toy car. We don't know who made it. We don't know where it came from. I can tell you it's a blue toy car that kind of went like this. You're out of luck. Oh, totally out of luck. Yeah. I mean, it, and, and you know, I fully anticipated in this particular playpen case, you know, basically what had happened was it was during COVID. Mom was working from home kid was a real active kid and climbing in and out of the playpen and 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 so mom just like goes on amazon 
and types in like sturdy playpen. <clears throat> Next thing you know, Amazon ships. Yeah, they, she looked at the safety certification, looked a couple other things. Next thing you know, she gets this playpen. They put it up and, you know, it's right in the area where the mom's working. So mom got up to go into the kitchen, make the kids kids lunch. It was the two-year-old and then the nine-year-old that were in the room. And there was all kinds of toys that were in the playpen, a toy box. And the, the child got on top of the toy box. And what happened was the toy box slid out. Either the child ended up kicking it out or it slid out. And when the, when the baby fell, it, its windpipe hit the top of the playpen, which was not padded. It was a steel bar. And children's windpipe at that age are not fully developed. And so it crushed, it crushed the, the, the baby's windpipe and the baby asphyxiated and died right in front of the mom and nine-year-old sister. So I mean, it was just a, as horrible, horrible circumstances as you could possibly imagine. And, and so, you know, we fully anticipated that the playpen would be gone. We would never be able to look at it, never be able to test it, but it wasn't. And, and so many other cases where we've been called, that's the first question we ask. I'm like, is it still there? Do you still have it? And unfortunately, when they say no, I'm like, as tragic, tragic as it is, unless you have a video of it or some other photographs or something that we can do to piece it together, you know, unfortunately, you know, you're right, Stan. It's 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 now a compounded tragedy because you really can't you, know, you can't do anything about it to to help those families achieve justice. So I want to circle around to something you said about safety certifications. Yeah. Okay, you mentioned I remember growing up and I used to see like UL listed and had no idea what the heck that meant, but I used to yeah. see it on almost every little cooking product and everything I bought my mom for Christmas. I just, you know, those crazy mm -hmm. kitchen gadgets and stuff you would buy. Yeah. Your, yeah, They used to be listed on everything. And I know it comes with underwriters laboratories. You know, what, what, just briefly, what is a safety certification? Yeah. So, um, in, in like children's furniture, children's toys, play pens, things like that, th there's a number of different or, you know, organizations that do testing on product. So basically what happens is the manufacturer will take their product and they will voluntarily give it to one of these various organizations. The organization will then look at it and they'll say, okay, when you design, like, take a playpen, for example, when you design a playpen, this is the criteria that you must take into consideration. These are the things that must be present. Does this product kind of check all those boxes? Does this product meet that criteria? Um, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll test all kinds of things, you know, about it. And then if it does, that organization will then give it a uh, safety certification that then they can attach as you said, you know, remember like the UL, the old UL mm -hmm. stuff, you can put it on, you know, put it on the product. And, and depending upon, um, depending upon the type of product it is, there's different organizations that you know, specialize in children's toys, different organizations that specialize in children's furniture, you know, different safety organizations, if there's um, uh, like playground equipment, things of that nature. Uh, so there's all a, a number of, but, you know, different organizations with the important part is that it's gone through some type of rigorous testing so that whenever you're purchasing it, you can, you know, you can trust that this product is safe for its intended use. Now, obviously, if, if, if a child is doing something that nobody's ever tested something, you know, you know, before, um, then, you know, those are all the, always the kind of anomalies where you say like, well, you can't design for every particular circumstance. That's true. But you can design for safety for the circumstances that are normal and customary and that, you know, the kids, you know, kids are, nor you know, doing. Uh, so those are, you're right. Like you see those, those stamps. But what we've seen is that, especially on these online sales platforms, there's no paper, right? And, and so it's very easy to Photoshop something it's very easy to put something on, you know, like an Amazon, like in this particular case that we have, um, you know, there was a fraudulent safety certification and the parents had no idea. This, this, this was even a possibility. 
And so they looked and they said, okay, yeah, it's got a safety certification. But at the end of the day, when you look at that safety certification and then you go to the particular organization and look it up, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. Um, and so, you know, it was it obviously, uh, you know, fraudulent and, and, and very problematic. And it, it's very prevalent in that industry right now. So my kind of lead me to my next question is, are there any standards for certifying agencies? I mean, am I able to say, hey, certified by Stan and I charge people $100 to send in their product and I say, look safe to me? Yeah, also, yeah. So most of these organizations are kind of quasi government organiz you know, government organizations that um, have received some type of blessing from, you know, from the government that they're able to certify these particular, you know, products of the of this nature. It's not just a, hey, send me, you know, send in your check and we'll give you a certification. There's, there's an actual process that they, you know, that they do have to go to. Now, the problem is it's 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 not always mandatory, um, which is, you know, amazing. Uh, and and as we were getting into these cases and doing more research, I was I was shocked that not every product that a kid um, or or you know a child is going to be using uh, or parents are going to be using for children, not every single solitary one has to go through some type of safety certification process. So. You know, parents really have to have to be diligent in looking at these things and saying, all right, you know, yeah, is it is it safe? How did it get this safety certification? What was the organization that certified it? Making sure that it is one of the reputable or more reputable organizations, uh, you know, that, um, you know, that's out there. Uh, and then that manufacturer is, you know, a manufacturer that um, they know or they can they can find out and get information about. And it's not just some, you know, uh, manufacturing plant in 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 China, uh, or some other, you know, or Singapore or someplace else that you don't know anything about, and and you don't know what their standards are, you don't know what they're doing, um, and so that's, you know, we we obviously we we uh, import a lot of children's toys, furniture, you name it clothing, bottles, whatever it may be. And you know, we import a lot from China and some of them are perfectly fine and some of them are not. So you really got to be careful. So you kind of, I've got a few different questions to follow sure. up on that, but used to be like when I grew up and, and kind of date myself now, Kmart and Walmart were the big retailers, right? And, and you assumed that Kmart and Walmart were liable if something they sold was unsafe. So sure. there was just some basic underlying assumption that if it made it to the shelf, someone had already looked at it and determined and made some sort of determination that it was safe. I mean, was that that correct? Yeah, and, and that's a very good point. You know, before the rise of the online retailers, you know, you would have a product on a shelf, and and there were, again that would go through a process. If if I was Walmart or Kmart or Best Buy. And I was buying a product. I'm buying it from a distributor, who and that distributor is is telling me that this particular product has gone through X Y Z testing. It is now safe to put on my shelf because, you know, remember in the product liability world, the seller of the product could ultimately be liable for a defective product. So these online re or the you know the big box, the traditional brick and mortar retailers certainly wanted to make sure that the products that they were selling were safe and they were doing their due diligence. Well, now there isn't a Best Buy anymore. I mean, they're gone. There's no Kmart anymore. There's still Walmart, but now even Walmart, you know, a big portion of their sales is online. You know, they're 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 direct competitors of of you know of Amazon uh, and some of the other you know online marketplaces. So now you don't have that. You, you know, you have these manufacturers that some of them are selling directly, you know, through a third party platform such as a, you know, such as an Amazon. Uh, so you don't have that level of scrutiny on these particular, you know, particular products. Um, you just have a product that, you know, it's made its way onto this platform. You don't know how the, it's made its way onto that platform. You don't know what the vetting process was. You don't know who vetted it, if anybody. So let me ask you, so now, you know, I'd say your competitor to Walmart is Amazon. 
Yeah. Does Amazon bear that same sort of responsibility as it relates to Amazon products? So, and I'll, I'll give this particular, you know, this playpen case, it's an example because it's ongoing right now. So we sued Amazon and what we sued Amazon was under a theory that Amazon is essentially the de facto manufacturer, right? Because the product is coming from China. It's sold on an Amazon platform. Everything about it tracks back to Amazon. Like there's not a website, you know, when you, when it says go to the website, you click on it, it goes back to an Amazon page. If you want to have, have um, uh, directions or videos on how to put it together, that tracks back to an Amazon page as well. So essentially our theory in the case was like, look, if Amazon is making a profit on selling this and they're representing it, that it's a, am, essentially an Amazon product, then at the end of the day, Amazon should be responsible if it's defective and it hurts somebody. And, and so, you know, so far, uh, you know, we, we're, uh, we're moving forward with litigation. And I think under the law, you know, that, that we're right. I mean, ultimately, we may have to go try the case and a jury may have to, you know, tell us whether we are or not. But, but in theory, and when you look at the, you know, product liability law, Amazon could be liable either as a, a, a seller, reseller, or a quote unquote manufacturer distributor because they're doing all of that in some capacity for a particular, you know, particular product. For sure. And I've always kind of looked at it in a more naive standpoint of in order for the Chinese manufacturer to get the product in the hand of the American consumer, there is a necessary third party in the middle. Used to yep. be Walmart who would buy them by the thousands and bring them over in a crate and then look at them. Yep. Now it's shifted to Amazon. But without that that third party intermediary who is inevitably making a profit, the transaction does not occur. Right, no so, question. Now, how does this change if we go away from Amazon and we start looking at like our Alibabas and some of these foreign based trend, yeah. you know, commerce I, websites? It, Stan, it's a great question. It really is because um, those, you know, the Alibabas of the world, I mean, they're, you know, even though you can access, go on that, you know, where do you sue them? Right. I mean, Amazon is at least an American company. So we know that they're an American company. They're based in Washington. They're incorporated in Delaware. So, I mean, you, you have a basis to sue, sue Amazon. Um, you know, Alabama, Alibaba is not. So, you know, then you have not only do you have a product liability fight, but now you have a jurisdictional fight. Can you get jurisdiction over them in the United States? You're going on to you know a foreign website, and and you're purchasing a product through you know, it's a third party through a foreign you know foreign website outside the United States. Very, it's going to be very difficult, and and it's really a, um, I mean it's an area of the law I think that is evolving. You know at this point, I don't know anybody that has any products liability cases right now in the United States against Alibaba. I know my case, and then there's a number of other cases across the country that are, are, you know, suing Amazon, you know, for you know for products, you know, products cases. But I, it's going to be a it's going to be a big fight uh, for sure. Well, because I the reason I ask is I've always wondered, you know, online retailers are not all the same. There is some benefit from using an American based retailer in that if something goes wrong, you're in America too. You can sue them, yeah. you can do these things. I I was recently I've got a son, okay, and he's fifteen or fourteen going on fifteen and likes being pulled behind the boat in tubes. And I don't know if you've seen mm -hmm. they've got one that you know, it could fly like it was a big yeah. wide one that if you, okay, they were banned in the U S because they're not yeah. safe. Okay. Yeah. In order to get one, which I looked at getting, it's been about 1200 bucks and I could go through Alibaba and get this product, which was banned in the U S but I could get it shipped to the U S or some near replica and be just as unsafe as the government was trying to prevent me from being. Sure. And I, you know, I'm going, well, heck if it's already banned in the U S there's no way in heck, you know, there's, there's that you're ever going to get your hands on these people to sue if something goes wrong. 
totally uh, you're 100 percent right and that's why in in again going back to the plate pen case we didn't even sue the chinese manufacturer because we're, we're never i mean we should, we've been down that road before with tired like it's it, you're never going to get to them um even though there's you know foreign jurisdictions selling them here everything else you know they're not it's not like the auto manufacturers you know the subarus of the world or nissans or any of those where they're they have dedicated established american outposts um these are entities that they don't have anything you know there there's no brick and mortar in the united states you can't go to an alibaba store uh and and you know buy you know buy that product it's coming from I don't even know where it's coming from, but it's coming from, you know, either either Asia or, um, you know, the Far East, so somewhere that if it hurts somebody, you're likely to not have any recourse. Well, and then, you know, some of the manufacturers behind these third party websites that will sell stuff have absolutely no uh, concern for safety of a product. Yeah. It is a pure price and profit play look if they find you know 20 gallons of free lead paint they're going to paint some children's toys with them and sell them they, yeah yes, because they are. the paint is free right and they're going to save yep. five cents per product and make that much more yeah uh, and you know so it does as a consumer if you're out here christmas shopping for your kid and you want to have some level of confidence you really need to stay towards some of the retailers you know the amazons the walmart's these kind of things, if you want to at least have any recourse against the yeah. the seller, correct? Absolutely, and and even you know beyond just the recourse, just making sure, especially you know if you're going to go and buy something on Amazon and it it it, it is for a child and there it could be dangerous. Like really do some research, look at those safety certifications, and then cross reference them because they're just. There's so much fraud, um, you know, out there in this particular, you know, area, uh, you know, with products. It's unbelievable. I was I, honestly, I was truly shocked at the amount of, um, you know, fraudulent safety certifications that, uh, you know, that are out there. But, you know, our expert told us, uh, you know, she said that it happens every single solitary day, every single day. There's companies that are not reputable. And, you know, they're. They're willing to cut corners and, and you know, put kids kids' lives at risk. All right. I don't know if you, you remember this. This was a story probably 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. But I remember used to be lighters they sold that were marketed as childproof lighters. And, I you know, you would get them for fire. It's like, God, there's no way these could keep anyone from lighting them, right? You're like, right, right, where's right. the childproof feature on this? Yeah. It turns out one of the ladies that ran a lab certifying these types of lighters were just fraudulently certifying them and falsifying the test. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's been something that's been going on for a while, you know, trying people trying to get around standards. And, you know, and people trying to cut corners, you're never going to avoid that. When someone wants to go verify, you know, this, this is what you're talking about, the certification, the safety certification. What, like, like, give me an example. If someone is to buy, let's say, a playpen, just what sure. types of organizations might be certifying that? Yeah. So let me see if I could find the, let's see if I could pull it up and then actually give a website. So there's one called the Juvenile, that's the one, Juvenile Products Manufacturer, Manufacturers Association. And so that's one that will do a lot of, uh, of testing and certification. Uh, and, that, and again, that's just, that's just one of them. But, you know, take it, the U.S. Consumer Product and Safety Commission is another one. So if you see that there's something along those lines, like that it's there they're advertising that it's been certified by one of these particular organizations. You can go to the organization, you can pull it up and you can, you can, you can verify it. If it's an organization, whatever organization it is, go to their website because they'll have a list of all the products or they should have a list of all the products that they've certified. Now let's kind of go to the other extreme. If it's an organization that you've never heard of and you go and they don't even have a website, that's probably going to alert you that this is, you know, not legitimate and, and make sure that you kind of, you know, steer, you know, steer away from it. Um, but those are, you know, two, there's, there's certainly more, 
Uh, but those are, you know, in, in, and again, it really is specific to the particular type of product, um, whether it's, you know, clothing or furniture, or toys or whatever, you know, whatever it may be. Well, and I think as a, you know, as a parent, I think the level of care you're required to show obviously changes based on the age of your child. You know, as, as a parent of a 14 year old kid, now I'm not worried about a small part breaking off and him choking. Right. As right. a parent of a three year old, you need to be very concerned about that. So it sounds to me like what you're saying is it's almost a two step process. If you're shopping for children, uh, for stuff one, you need to make sure there's some sort of safety seal or certification related to this product. If you're planning on putting it in your child's hands, uh, to to play with, to stay in, to sleep in, yep. to jump in, or any of that, correct? Not yes, and I would add this: if you've come across something and you got six play pens, and the sixth one is fifty percent less than the other five, you get what you pay for, and and there's a reason that that one might be so inexpensive. And it may be because there isn't a safety certification. There isn't a reputable manufacturer. It's not made with, you know, with materials that are, are safe and intended for chil you know, children. So we're, we, all wanna, we all wanna get a good deal. We all wanna save some money, but when you find something that is, you know, from the price points that's just so far out of line with some of the other products, you, you really got to take, you know, pause and consider where it's coming from and what is the safety aspect of that particular product. Well, and bottom line is safety costs money, okay? If you want to make something safe, you got to put some money into it, okay? Cars would you be do. cheaper if you didn't have to put the seatbelt in there. They'd be cheaper without the airbags. They'd be cheaper without all these things. So if you're getting that cheaper car overseas, it's not sold in America, it's probably because it doesn't have airbags and seatbelts, and there's a reason why it's cheaper. So it's not Always. because yeah. this one person has figured, is paying the same as everyone else, and they just don't want to make money. It's because they're cutting the corners. And yeah, no you know, question. it's one thing, you know, when you got an adult, and you're buying something for yourself, and maybe it's a decorative thing you don't care about. When you're putting it in your child's hands, if you do something that could have been prevented and your child gets hurt and you look back on it, you're going to blame yourself forever. Yeah. You know, I, so. I, I, no question. And handling these cases, I mean, the guilt that these parents carry around is profound. Um, and it doesn't go away ever. There's not a single day that it ever goes away. And, and you know, they, they, their lives are shattered um, and forever. It's really sad. All right, Ed. Well, I, I really appreciate you being out here today. I want to, two things. I want to, is there anything you want to add, uh, you know, before we let you go? And then I want to make sure we need your name, your firm name, sure. phone numbers, yep. how we can get hold of you. If anyone listening is, oh, you know, I, I really want to speak to Ed. I've got a situation I want to talk to him sure. about. Sure, sure. You know, as we kind of come into the holidays, um, you know, I would just, tell people to be extra vigilant, especially, you know, when they're out there shopping or shopping on, you know, shopping online. Um, because everybody, you know, listen, we all, we all get busy and there's going to be those time periods like, oh my God, I forgot to get a gift for whomever it is, or I'm, I'm in a rush. Just take time to make sure that these, the, the things we talked about today, they're safety certifications, they're legitimate organizations, and, and that, you know, if you're purchasing something, it's from a reputable, you know, reputable dealer. Those are really important, you know, just very important things to do. So my name is Ed Siramboli. My firm is uh, Fellerman and Siramboli. We have offices all throughout Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Kingston, Scranton, Berwick, Honesdale. Uh, we share some space with a, with a, uh, out in Pittsburgh as well. Phone number is uh, I always I always give people my cell phone number because I'm on the road a lot and it's you know the best way to get a hold of me and it's uh, five seven zero five one zero nine nine four one five seven zero five one zero nine nine four one my email address is uh, ejc at fclawpc dot com feel free to call text any you know any questions happy to you know happy to add, you know answer them and uh help out in any way we can so thank hey, you stan Ed, you're welcome i appreciate it thanks for coming on it's been informative thank you
This episode of David vs. Goliath is over, but your journey is just getting started. To share your story with us, visit dolmanlaw.com. That's D-O-L-M-A-N-Law.com or call 866-965-6242. The insights and views presented in David vs. Goliath are for general information purposes only and should not be taken as legal advice for any individual case or situation. The information presented is not a substitute for consulting with an attorney, nor does tuning into this podcast constitute an attorney-client relationship of any kind. Any case result information provided on any portion of this podcast should not be understood as a promise of any particular result in a future case. Dolman Law Group. Big firm results. Small firm personal attention.